Let's go ahead and dive into Clarice and take a look at what we can start doing inside of it. So just basic, when you load up your Clarice, it's gonna have this type of a scene. If it doesn't, you can come up to new and new scene and it'll create a new scene with a camera, a light, a path tracer and an image. So this is everything you need to get going. So this is a distant light. Obviously you need a camera for the uh, renderer to work. And then the path tracer is the actual renderer and your image is basically the uh, rent final render view to uh, for your scene. So just taking a look around the UI here, uh, just a couple things. Obviously you got your attribute editor over here. You have uh, where you're gonna assign materials over here. You have some layer, a layer editor over here, which is gonna be um, used later on. We'll dive into that. Your image gallery, so this is your, uh, what different images here. If I create a new image, you can see that we have our different render views basically inside of there. Um, we also have our timeline down here, and then we got some stuff around our viewport. So the viewport and our tools over here are gonna be most important. Obviously you got your normal move scale, rotate, transform tools. You also have a clone stamp, a particle paint, a property paint, a pick fit, which we'll go over in a minute, a render region, which you can use inside of your render view to select your render regions. And then you can just click out of it to uh, deselect it and render the entire scene again. I'll go back to the 3D view. That kind of sums up most of the tools over here. Um, we'll dive into those further as we get into things. But up across the toolbar up above your render view is going to be some more very important stuff. So right here we have our hood, so we can enable or disable that. You can see all of the, the different settings there. You uh, can also do some uh, some other stuff with your your exposure, so you can crank that up. You can crank your gamma up. You also have this denoiser right here. As you hover over things, obviously you're gonna have some uh, stuff pop up telling you what it is. Don't hover over the sliders though because these are just used to uh, affect the different um, things next to it. So the denoiser here is going to have a percentage here. So this is gonna basically determine how quickly it uh, takes effect though. So the denoiser will take effect uh, pretty quick at 100% at zero. Obviously it's not gonna take effect at all. And then if I just deselect it, it's not gonna take effect either. We also have options here. So all sorts of different options. This is gonna be your 3D view options. So different than if you go up to your preferences, there's uh, different stuff in here as well, but these are gonna be your 3D view preferences. But the big thing here that you're gonna be taking a look at, you're gonna use uh, this look through camera. So you can select your camera and you can see our view changed a little bit there. And you can see what your camera view is going to be looking like. You also, once you're in this view, you can move around and it'll change how your camera is looking at stuff. So if I go ahead and deselect it by just clicking into empty space and clicking apply, see our view changes again. And then we could also drag and drop our camera onto here to reselect our camera view. Just get out of that. Uh, let's go ahead and drop in some stuff though. So in order to create things, let's go ahead, go into our project. Let's press control shift C and that will create a new context. You can also right click new context. And then you can also rename this by hitting F2. So let's just call this import. And this is how we're going to import stuff. So you can do that uh, different, a couple of different ways. Um, you don't actually need an import folder. You just need to import stuff into your actual scene, but this is to help stay organized. So you can do that a couple of different ways. For example, textures, you'd come into texture and then map and bring in a map file, or you can come up to file import, and then you have all your options up here. So let's go ahead and bring in some maps. So just uh, using the stuff from our demo, I'm gonna bring in our texture and then our terrain. 
and those are just our height map and our texture map. And then if we want to also create stuff, we can do that through the right click as well. And then let's go ahead and create something like a uh, poly grid just for reference here. So you can do that through that, or you can also right click and do a uh, type and start typing and it will automatically filter out the different stuff uh, based on what you type. So there's not actually a search bar here. You just got to know that once you start typing that it's going to bring stuff up and the material context is going to work the same way. Jumping back up here though, onto our um, toolbar above our viewport, we have the different shading modes here. So you're going to use probably these bottom three the most simple shading, previs, and progressive rendering. The only one that's going to require lights to be in your scene in order for you to see something is going to be progressive rendering. So as I click this, you can see that our sphere or our uh, polygrid here turns uh, black. It's because we don't have any lights in our scene. If I go ahead and right click and type in environment, you can see that it is now lit up. And another thing to note, whatever context you are in, so whatever folder that you are in, whenever you create something, obviously it's going to come into that folder. However, everything that you create inside of a material view is also going to pop into whatever folder that you have selected. So be wary of that. And then previs, you're also going to see different colors in your textures on your object, but it just doesn't have the lighting. Uh, and then simple shading just doesn't have any of that. You also have ambient occlusion with some sliders there, and then your context view, as well as these options up here. And you can split your viewport this way, which is extremely handy. I like to split it in half, and then you can create any different one of these views that you want. I like to split it in half and then create a material editor so that I can work on my materials side by side with whatever I'm working on. Now, if I go ahead and create a new folder here, so we'll hit Control Shift C, and then if I just drag in my grid here and I go into that context, you're gonna see that our grid is now inside of this context. So if I bring this over, you're gonna see that if I go to progressive rendering, I now have a black grid. Now, why is this not showing any of our lighting? We, we just created our environment right here. So we should have lighting when we're, we have this selected. But the reason that we don't is because if you look up here, this is going to be set to whatever folder that you're in when it's set to context. So if we have this selected, our import folder, it's going to be showing us everything inside of the import folder. If I have the scene selected, everything inside of the scene. So if I want to change that and lock that to a certain folder, I can just grab the import folder and I drag it up here to the context. And now we're locked inside of that. So we can now dive into our polygrid here and we can do things in here and it's locked inside of review. So just a, a quick note on that so you guys don't get lost and figure out why you're, um, why you're losing things inside of your, when you're clicking on different folders. So I'm going to be diving a bunch more into some materials next, as well as um, scattering and stuff like that with displacements and all that sort of stuff. So keep an eye out for that. But I also have a bunch of other videos on my channel that deal with Houdini, which we're also going to be using stuff from Houdini inside of Clarice. So I would recommend check, uh, checking those out. We also have stuff on the channel about Redshift and Cinema 4D if you're interested in that. I would definitely recommend taking a look at those videos as well. But make sure you guys uh, subscribe so you don't miss any new videos on Clarice. We're taking a look at how to do different things inside of um, this awesome program that we have at our disposal. So thank you guys for watching and have a good day.